you, you may be, know me, you may be surprised that I'm a somewhat reluctant speaker. It's because uh, Sandeep gave me the topic, and it would probably not have been my choice, uh, but I've tried to do the best I can. I'm supposed to talk about the future. Um, now, it's really difficult to live up to being called a visionary. Sandeep wanted both of us to talk about it, but Aaron said it would be boring if, if he had to do it too. But I think it's going to be boring if I do it, because if you think about it, you've been predicting the future all day long. Uh, what could I possibly say that somebody hasn't suggested? So and I thought, well, maybe I'm not looking at visionary the right way. So I went to Wikipedia. And, uh, supernatural? <laughs> I don't feel at all supernatural. That, that can't be the... Drugs? <laughs> Medi meditation? Dreams? Um, I'm in trouble. I, I don't do this. <laughs> oh, mathematics. That's it. That's it. Mathematics. I could do something with mathematics. I don't think I can predict the future with mathematics, but I, maybe I can establish my credentials. Um, I'm not qualified, but... Is that maybe the face of the future? No. <laughs> it's the face of a Berkeley three-machine system. <laughs> okay. Now, this is a short trip, but if you don't want to get to close your ears, because I'll get back to the subject. But this is, in fact, a Berkeley three-machine system. And this is a Poincaré section formed with about 900,000 points. And I didn't make this face. It's been hiding inside this three machine system. And you're the first large group to see this face. Now, someone said he looked happy. I recognize that. You recognize it. <laughs> okay. If anybody really cares, I'll tell you how to make one of your own. Okay. So I, I thought, well, I'll look further. Maybe I'll find out something else. Well, it points out that today with all the social media, anything I say can and will be used against me. Now, th there are some ways I can avoid this, and that is to have a large staff. I don't have a large staff, so I have to be careful. Nobody films this. You said you were filming it. Don't film it. Right? We're just doing our job. I don't feel like I'm a visionary at all. Uh, the idea of a linear state estimator goes way back. It's in the 1988 relaying book. Uh, we were in South Korea in Seoul talking to them about 20 plus years ago. They didn't have any state estimator, and we were suggesting to them that they could go directly to linear. And they said, well, who else is doing it? And we had to admit, no, you'll be the first. Well, they weren't the least bit interested in being the first. So if there are any visionaries in the room, they're probably at Dominion. Uh, they at least had the guts to do it, whereas no one else did. The reviewer of one of our recent unfunded proposals said we were addressing the current power system, and that was pointless because the new power system full of renewable energy was right around the corner. Uh, right around the corner? The massive investment in transmission lines and generation plants makes it unlikely to me that we're going to abandon them all overnight. Uh, the less than speedy acceptance of synchrophasers implies it takes longer than right around the corner to do anything. And a member of the NAE said in the 80s that PMUs were too accurate. We did not know the power system that well. <laughs> well, um, the Seagray representative for Great Britain said in the same period that there'd never be a digital relay in Britain. <laughs> I think there must be. So why is it hard? Why, why are people messing up these predictions and so forth? Well, I think if you think about it, it's not what's technically possible. It's all the other things that intervene. So if you think about it, if you were asked in 2003 to predict that there'd be 1,000 PMUs by 2013, you would have had to have foreknowledge of a financial disaster, a very unlikely election result for 2003, and a stimulus package which you probably didn't even understand what it was. Now, other people are not afraid to do this. MIT has written a large document, 300 pages, with a score of contributors called The Findings, The Future of the Electric Grid. And being MIT, they presented at the National Press Club in December of 2011. And the first question from the, second question from the audience was, 
that didn't the federal government have no right to regulate the flow of electricity because there had been no electricity when the Constitution was written. <laughs> now, a very clever MIT professor pointed out that electrons had been seen crossing state lines. <laughs> That's okay, but I think a better answer is the FAA and the interstate highway system argues that things that didn't exist when the Constitution were written still need to be governed. Okay. Now, what did they say about PMUs? A couple of findings. PMUs could improve the performance of energy management systems. Well, that's not anything I'm saying. We've heard it today already um, by providing real-time data to determine system state faster and more accurately than current estimation tools. You need more PMUs to do that. Yes, that's true, that's clear. Automatic control action based on real-time data from a wide area network of PMUs represents a major change in system operation. Yes, I think Anjan is saying not likely even, right? Today, such tools are limited in number and capability. Significant research can control algorithms and improved in confidence in the Reliability and accuracy of PMU data is needed to make such control more prevalent. I think it's safe to say we'll work on those two problems, and then we probably will make some progress. I hope that's a safe prediction. They make some recommendations having to do with working on both PMUs and power electronics and trying to get the means and the ways of doing all this to happen, and they want NERC to help people share PMU data. The past. I discovered at Cornell that students enjoyed learning about how badly we had done at predicting the future in the past, and the dumb things that had happened along the way, and strangely enough, connecting with this is how old I was in terms that they could understand. So I was a student when Sputnik, who's been mentioned already today, was launched. It was about a beach ball sized container that had a radio in it, and it beeped as it went around the sky. It was the only thing in orbit. Right? Before that, only the moon had orbited the Earth, and now there was a satellite. It changed education and did a lot of things. Okay. Different subject. <laughs> <laughs> I had tenure before Professor Shukla, who's done such a magnificent job. At this I took a course in making vacuum tubes. There were no transistors. It burned your fingers. I owned a wire recorder. I bet most of you have never seen one. You record it on spools of wire that passed over a magnetic head. Right? No magnetic tape. I was a member of the Cornell Rocket Society. We had a bunker. We needed the bunker. Now, in 1957, we weren't the only people who needed a bunker. Uh, how do I make that happen? No, that. How do I play my movie? Just click on the picture. There were a number of failures during the year, and the United States promptly announced them. The first, the most spectacular of them, was in 1957. There were other Vanguard failures, all achieved takeoff, but trouble occurred either in the second or third stages. Explorers 2 and 5. Beacon and Pioneer 2 were also considered unsuccessful. <laughs> we had like a year's worth of failures to launch a rocket. So the Cornell Rocket Society, the rocket wasn't that big, but we had about the same one. <laughs> there are a number of well-known examples, many of which I'm sure you've heard. I think there's a world market for maybe five computers. Tom Watson, chairman of the board of IBM in 1943. When a calculator on the ENIAC is equipped with 18,000 vacuum tubes and weighs 30 tons, 30 tons, computers in the future may have only 1,000 vacuum tubes and weigh up 1.5 tons. That's only 3,000 pounds. There's no reason anyone in the world would want a computer in their home. The founder and CEO of DEC. 640K ought to be enough for anybody, Bill Gates. Now, it's attributed to Bill Gates, but he's got the crowd I don't have, and so now they're saying he didn't say that. <laughs> There's not the slightest indication that nuclear energy will be obtainable. It would mean that the atom would have to be shattered at will. Einstein, 
If Einstein can't get it right, I can't do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Fooling around with electricity, alternating current, is just a waste of time. No one will ever use it. Thomas says. <laughs> it's only not only a technical field where this gets messed up. I'm just as glad it'll be Clark Gable who's falling on his face and not Gary Cooper. Is that Gary Cooper turned down the leading part and gone with the wind? <laughs> the concept is interesting and well formed, but in order to put in a greater grade better than a C, it's got to be feasible. This is a Yale University professor grading Fred Smith's paper about having overnight delivery. This is the founding of FedEx. The cookie store is a bad idea. Besides, the market research shows Americans like crispy cookies, not soft, chewy cookies like you make, Mrs. Fields. We don't like their sound, and guitar music is on the way up. Decca Records rejecting the beat. <laughs> so, I'll make a humble attempt, but you've got to remember, no one does this eminently well, right? I think there'll be more PMEs. Aaron talks about one in every substation like China. It also talks about tens of thousands of potential PMUs already in place. Relays can generally become more, <coughs> more adaptive than they are today and less involved in exacerbating cascading outages. Backup protection can be supervised. Our system control can and should be done with redundant controllers and signal paths, like aircraft control systems. The new Infiniti Q50 has a steer-by-wire system, no mechanical connection from the steering wheel to the wheels. But it has three independent electronic controllers. Big data will come to PMU systems, in spite of ARPA-E review. <laughs> WECC is planning to archive 150,000 measurements a second. SIPs, remedial action schemes, uh, special protection schemes, can and will be coordinated using PMU measurements. The linear estimator, in spite of what you've heard today, is an attractive data validation scheme for virtually all PMU applications. You may not want a linear estimator, but you want to have one to clean up all the other mistakes. Operator alarms and alerts can be produced for oscillations, angle limits, voltage violations, and et cetera, and the et cetera has a very long list. We asked in writing a proposal for suggestions, and I got GICs connected to synchrophasers. Maybe, I guess, I don't know. At 30 times a second, synchrophaser data can be used for equipment monitoring and asset management, condition-based maintenance, things like I squared T. <coughs> you can't see it now, but you can see it 30 times a second. From the MIT study, whoops, I skipped one. From the no, I'm still skipping it. Back. Let me do it. There it is. I suspect Sandeep and others will find techniques to protect synchrophaser data from cyber attack, at least temporarily. Cybersecurity is an ongoing issue. It's a competition among clever people. The MIT report has a very similar statement. With rapidly expanding connectivity and rapidly evolving threats, making the grid invulnerable to grid cyber events is impossible. And improving re resilience to attacks and reducing the impact of attacks is important. And that's like saying blackouts will never go away. We can just try to recover from them more quickly and keep them smaller. When privacy discussions in the popular press focus on <coughs> consumer electri electric usage data, Control over grid information is arguably more important. Now, at this point, I was going to pick on some streams of research that I was pretty sure weren't going to work out. And I had some funny pictures. And I might even tell you what the funny picture was, but I can't show it to you. I took it out. Because I realized that the people who were predicting progress were not on these lists that I've been making. The people who were saying it won't work are the ones that were on the list. So if you have some crazy idea, I'm not going to pick on you. Maybe you're right. Um, but I really find it hard to believe rat brains are going to control power systems. <laughs> some of these names have come up before. Um, I want to mention them again. I've been informed I'm supposed to retire after this event. 
I don't intend to, but I'm sure this is my last chance to say this. So I'm going to say it. There are some people I should thank. Uh, the first is Alfred P. Sloan, without whom I would not have gone to Cornell. Uh, he had the six Sloan scholars in my class at Cornell for dinner in New York when we graduated. He was still alive. Mary Vaughan, who's already come up today, uh, a Cornell alum who was manager of engineering manpower at AP in 1976 when I interviewed. He allowed me, and that's the right word, I believe, to be a faculty intern. There hadn't been a lot of faculty interns. Fred Schweppe, who has also been mentioned today, and Jerry Wilson, who were the dean at MIT, were faculty interns. The people from Cornell tried to be interns and follow me, and Larry didn't want them. So I think letting me do it was the, the right word. <laughs> Joe once asked me why so many good people were at AEP in the old days, in, in that old AEP. I think we were interrupted and I didn't get the answer. My answer is Philip Sporn. Um, he has many bios on the net. I just I copied a little paragraph. He's the CEO from 47 to 61, an executive with an engineer's knowledge. He kept the AP among the early adapters of new technologies, increased advanced, including advanced generators, high voltage transmission, and connections to the company's neighbors. My observation is he's one of the very few non-academics who's a member of both the National Academy of Engineering and the National Academy of Science. There are occasional scientist engineers who get into both, but somebody from a power company? That's amazing. Many colleagues uh, and some <coughs> truly remarkable, more truly remarkable graduate students. And thank you all for coming.